here the murder on um, 79th Street. Yeah! yeah. Weekend, Dying For It, directed by Gavin Barba. And so it's going to be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at, oh wait, hang on, Thursday at 8, Friday at 9, Saturday at 8, and then Sunday at 2, I think, but double check. Um, and then tomorrow night we're going to have a uh, Fordham stand up character show, so be sure to come out to that. And then our slot 2 show, which is Mercy, 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 written by Nate Crawford and directed by Liam Harris, is going to have auditions on Monday from 9 to 11 p.m. and Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Location is TBD, but it's going to be a crazy location, I'm sure. So be on the lookout. All right, without any further ado, strap in and be afraid. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Okay. Down below, we know we're pretending. 
trenches, but you can't stop a storm that blow yin and yang between tornadoes, an inseparable force of nature, although sometimes the wind is too strong. But Taylor, my sweet, my sweet summer sunshine, cooler and sweeter than a sweet tea on the sill of the Met, emitting a radiance so lovely I can't help but reflect, but even the moon tires of mirroring the sun's light. Just waiting for the night can glow bright on its own. I've never known what it's like to grace a room and eyes go to me. Maybe someday I'll be the new Taylor Shaw. I'll be stronger and brighter. I'll show them all. I'm not a sun or a tornado. I'm a honeysuckle scented hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor is my friend, but I feel the need to mention her condescension, incomprehension, her suspension of trust, slack tension combust. I lust for the attention of a cat five dimension. Call me Katrina when I flood the convention hall. I'll be stronger and brighter. I'll show them all. Her radar skewed off the wall. She never saw me as an equal. My best friend in the world. Oh, I sleep Taylor Shaw. <laughs> Onto hers. 
coked out. You choked out the sun with smoke. And the last time we spoke, I'm pretty sure your head was sky high. Don't you dare deny that you heard her. Deny? Deny? I expect you to believe the published lies, but that I heard her? I must be fucking high. To think that she, for a second, did, gave a shit about me? You must feel some sort of triumph then. She never cared anyway, so how dare you say that I tried to save my sinking ship by sinking her into my bed just because you're faking it to get ahead doesn't mean everyone is. Well, congrats, you'll never have to see her again. We arrived. The ever lovely Shelby arrived. Tragic dear she is. Her husband died just over a year ago, and it wasn't exactly a quiet ordeal. You see, some of the more gossipy papers spread some rumors about the fact that she might have played a part in it. But of course, I've known her my whole life. I mean, she could never have done such a thing. My father and her husband were co-chairs of the firm, and she was at absolutely every social gathering. She taught me so many of the things I know, and I idolized her, from culture to fashion to simple etiquette. Of course, such a blast from the past to see her out and about now, though. Started off as magic 
came breathing. And I think I would like magic again. As the gathering grew, a fresh set of faces arrived at the party. And like any proper party, there were people of all different backgrounds and careers. And Shelby introduced me to an art curator that um, Rowan had introduced her to. And we spoke a, quite a bit about a piece that my grandfather had given me when he passed away. Alex was absolutely interested and peppered me with questions, but I couldn't bear the thought of parting with this piece. I mean, it had always been his favorite. My father hung a piece crafted by Kandinsky above the, above the mantle of the study. The young Albon de la Dame, that lone woman walking the fine line between impression and abstract, all the way to the noble Bohem of the Upper East Side. My father said he was Kandinsky in a past life. You could see the paint chips beneath his skin as the physical gave way to the abstract. He laid himself upon the canvas, the sacrifice to the artistic afterlife. I remember only the smell of cigarettes, of acrylics, and still warm brushes. Lively as lost to Soviets and the realists alike. Mais madame, she and my father grieved. Separated and lost to the hands of foolish thieves that knew nothing of her worth. Her home was ransacked and destroyed, but my father's soul went missing when that woman was stripped off of our walls. The paint was left to dry in the crack and the canvas is burned with the fire of his own discontent. He refuged in ambiguity. I saw my father wither before me, but I vowed to love the canvas for him. To keep us both alive. But I lost my father three times. The artist is pilgrim. He went in search of the Dama di Moschia. The artist is prophet seeking divine redemption and delivery from the infection of isolation. The artist is a mark. He cut up lad flesh, painted bloody roses in springtime, and passed surrounded by canvas tower walls. All I have left is the paint beneath my flesh and the fire in my inside. And just when I thought the lady had gone missing, that insolent creature went ahead and showed me her hideaway. To think that my father's prized possession was gone, living on the wall of someone other than myself. A gift from her grandfather? What a joke! Hadn't he known that she had been stolen, held ransom, sold to a family with not much heart, but just too much money? There had to be a way to get back. Resurrection for my father, three days turned three years, Lazarus and the lady. It may not be his second coming, but it will be my own. There must be a way to find her. Share a cab on her way home. Invite myself in. What is the price of memory and affection? What is theft in the name of redemption? What is revenge in the name of damnation?
know her very well, though. <laughs> Despite the time we've spent together, she's always very quiet about her social life. Which is why I was so surprised to see her out tonight. <laughs> People think I'm heartless, but my heart's just made of paper. Worthless until I wrote words on it. I'll be honest, don't believe someone when they say you have value. That's only true based on what you can do. Don't give me a sob story, and as for a handout, I wrote a war plan and dug my way out. I'm a social Darwinist. I'll do what it takes to survive and I'll thrive because I'm the fittest. I don't need a Superman theory when I'm proof mortals are goddesses. But I grin. I seethe as I see offerings and accolades given to those who are just nicer than me. Aphrodite may be pretty, but Athena's got the answers. Don't pray for salvation when beauty's your relation. I am just desserts. I am just. I don't play pity or mercy or even blind trust. I do what I must. I've woken up early, stayed late, played all nine innings great. I'm consistent, persistent, make no mistakes or missteps. Perfection is how I show affection to my passionate lover, this paper and pen that has been my confiding, my best friend, the only Messiah I can muster a prayer to. Wouldn't you be so materialistic if the only thing that let you have a little luxury and gave you a good bottle of wine was when you could concoct your words and make them worth stocks? when you could withdraw value from the immaterial ideas and leave an audience in awe. Wouldn't you be so realistic when writing was the only way people could connect to how you feel? When it was the only way to prove the soul of this glacial woman was real? It's intact. It's only the empathy that I lack, this removed touch I have. My words are my suitor to the earth, and I am the modest goddess veiled by a newsprint. My articles are the only things that give others a hint of the power behind these meticulous clothes. Of the human, no one knows. I've made an idol of myself. Beautiful and intelligent and compelling worship, but Accolades never seem to return, and offerings are rarely burned, as promotions are given to those whose flesh is more easily felt, and love, fealty, is given to those who don't inspire fear, who haven't required oaths, from whom criticism hasn't been dealt. Flatterers, panders, the lot of them. They do not desire harshness nor truth because it is too bitter, even under the guise of pretty youth. And the light looks fondly on those burnished shades of blonde, while my brunette locks are mired in the muddy truth of earth, and hyperrealism is out of style. So now my words, my moments, when compared with this newly minted nymph, are no longer worthwhile with no one here to worship. <laughs> I stepped on so many people to get to the top. She just got everything handed to her. I worked my ass off. Here she is, I'm assuming, ungrateful, unimaginatively lucky. She just showed up. One moment, I was alone. Then she invaded my home, the office, and I had to adapt. I took her under my wing, showed her what she should or shouldn't be. I showed her the ropes, finding facts and writing tropes. I made her learn how a good story was something you had to earn. I couldn't believe my eyes. As she began to rise, navigating the social plane, winning journalistic fame, everyone forgot my name. I took her under my wing, 
was a substitute mother. I taught her how to make people love her voice in print. I thought we were friends, but apparently she didn't. She rode my coattail, never knew what it was like to fail. I thought she was kind. But, but she, she took everything that was mine! to surrender all your nobility and give in to the vain. And for what hollow prize? To be idolized? When I started out, I wanted to be something more than me. I wanted to use my gifts to heal the rifts with vengeance so swift. I wanted to bring justice. I wanted to bring rights. I wanted to fight all the right fights. Not sit here and fundraise small talk for long days. Look at cameras with a dull gaze. The campaign phase is a sad maze with dollar sign doorways. It always starts with one case. An innocent man, an innocent face. <clears throat> a public defender I couldn't decline. And so the burden of proof was mine. I needed a witness. I needed one word for his voice to be heard. I needed someone who wouldn't run. No fear of the gun, so I could finish what I had begun. So I did what needed to be done. I did what I could, but maybe not what I should. But you don't become king for the cases you don't win. Only one person here knows how exactly that case goes. A reporter, or so I'm told. And she's promised to be quiet, so the rest will just have to buy it. I guess that's just what it takes. You keep going until your heart breaks, until your smile's fake, until you can't give any more handshakes. But here's some advice for those with ambition. In politics, it's an honored tradition. If you can smile through clenched teeth, then the world is yours. But, uh, 
I'm stretching the truth. <laughs> I'm checking the proofs and they're not adding up. I've had more than enough of the puffed chest and this young press is breathing down my neck, so my next move needs to be drastic. And these spastic high society assholes them in some living to turn earth into a primordial womb. My work's the glue that can bind us to this earth till we just wind up wishing to die. And I guess, I guess that makes me some kind of a god. <laughs> so where's my goddamn applause when I walk in the room? <laughs> I'm self-assured, but they're self-obsessed in their black tie dress, and I think she knows my work's a mess. And I may have made a scene too soon in this Upper East Side apartment exhumed from a time when these clothes didn't look like costumes. So I'll give them youth if that's what they want, and they can stay gone and play God alongside me, but I'm a con artist. There's no catharsis for missing my target. My life is tarnished. See, science isn't stardust fantasy. No, science is all bullshit. I hoped you would have learned
assembled, though only seven still survived. <laughs> 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 so freshly spilt, it's staining my carpet like red wine. You're the judge in this courtroom. So who do you think should pay the price? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alright. Alright, how about you?
go home. <laughs> <laughs>